kind of weird that I, like, and that's the most, that's, that's also what's amazing with this too, is like, you can see that for me to like translate it and then to also constantly run into it too, mm -hmm. because you're like, you're like, I don't, I don't want this. Right. But sometimes mm -hmm. when you're saying that you're also attracting, like, I don't want, I don't want this. I don't want this, but then it's also putting it out there. And then sometimes you run into it again too. And you're like, Oh, this is so exhausting. Like, you know, I don't like, here we go again. You because know? if you're running away from it, so you have it here, you were born with that. Mm -hmm. And if you're trying to ignore it and run away from it, it's like, you're not giving the energy way out. Mm -hmm. So it starts to manifest in your life. If you ignore something that you have, that you, it, it is part, if you will going to be ignoring your beard, like it's not here, you will start in some, you're tripping over it, <laughs> you know, like it will be here anyway. <laughs> uh -huh. You have to take care of it, you That's know. That's hilarious. Yeah. So how you will going to work with those tools that are yours, like you were saying, there is this dark part of me that always, that sometimes talks. Mm -hmm. And the moment when you will be like, oh, no, 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 it will be like, I will go, I would have a reaction to someone that triggers, like something will be, so I give a knowledge and I'm aware of this part of myself, mm -hmm. how I'm going to be using it to let it out. Yeah. No, I acknowledge the dark side of myself a lot, the shadow realms and all the things internally that we struggle with, because I, th I think for me, a lot of times it's like a form of alchemy where I'm able to use that energy mm -hmm. and translate it into good. You know, because it's all energy. The, mm -hmm. Like the way it way we perceive light and dark, it's all just different, mm -hmm. right? So for me, I think a lot of times, um, it's just translating that energy and using it for like other things. Exactly. You know, and exactly. I've had to teach myself that too because, whew, I mean, sometimes I get so angry that it's like, I I, I could you know destroy unimaginable things. But I'm like, hey, I can also use that anger and frustration and, and translate it and to keep myself going with like other things that are more important with my life and everything like that. Because those things can drain you, mm -hmm. you know, they can suck energy from you or you can use that same energy to translate into other things that are more important in your life, mm -hmm. you know. And so for, for some people that I meet and I talk to, I'm always like, look, you have the capability of deciding where that energy goes right it's for you to decide no nobody can teach you these things because it's all in, it's all in here and though you can sit down with a guru and they can be like oh you need to do this to that it's it's great they can tell you the words but you have to figure it out within yourself there's no other way around it you know and that's why i think sometimes i play with those types of words with like teacher and guru and all these different all these different things because I because I truly believe that we're all just a reflection of each other teaching each other these different mm -hmm. things and for me to say like oh this is this is what you need to do is silly mm -hmm. for me it's a play on words because it really we're just telling ourselves what we need to do to, to further progress mm -hmm. the, the love that we have for ourselves and everybody else around us you know so yeah that's, it's amazing that you can see those things and, and I'm always so fascinated to uh, sit down also to, to see what I can do to change things because I know there's, there's so much more that I need to learn mm -hmm. in this lifetime and using the tools and information is so important because I still, I can feel I'm holding on to so many different like traumas like with my mom, with my sister, you know, where I know that once I'm able to like let that go and open up that channel of like energy so much more will come into my life but right now i'm still there like holding on to so much bullshit so you know normally I mean? where you have a chiron it will like it's a wound that will never stop bleeding mm, yeah. it sounds horrible <laughs> it does yeah. <laughs> i'm just like, like oh, oh my god no no no, no i'm sorry yeah that's no, alright. it's, it's okay. never going to be away but mm -hmm. in the moment when you are aware of that that kind of wound was given to you so you make the switch and you make a, uh, like the superpower from it like mm. you cannot heal people if you didn't go through certain uh experiences yep. like you were saying like you know like i wasn't like that i had to learn it like what taught you that experience and mm. time yeah so 
it doesn't mean that your shadows will gonna go away if you work on them and you try to solve it and uh, dis dissipate it it's like no it will always be part of me but it's a very important part of me when you show people stuff like that do you ever help them work through it or is it just like a like a here you go kind of thing i do program sometimes because like i was uh when i was doing just sessions i'm like so much information and the person is just like you know, like, I vomit all these words on them. And it's like, okay, and now you go. Yeah. And enjoy. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, oh my god, I'm so sorry. You will probably not know, like, three quarters of that. And for the minutes. next couple of days, there's like, <gasps> you know, it's like. Overwhelming, yeah. panic, yep. anxiety. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, you know, like, overall, like, I have two kids. So for me, like, I was always, like, listening to all of those information. I'm like, okay. I'm super motivated. I'm gonna start to applying into my life. Da, 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 da. Then, 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 then you're back into what you were always doing because mm -hmm. it's like the pattern. So I do believe that big things. It's amazing to do big things, but it's all about like the little ones, like a step by step. So what I started to do is uh, now I have a six weeks program. I'm planning to do it longer, but for now, with my little kids, it's a six-week program where I do the reading of a chart, and then based on your life, it's like, okay, how we can start to put like a little changes mm -hmm. and little shifts on your everyday thing. So if you would be like, you're rising in Pisces, and you would be uh, an encounter, for example, because that happens a lot, like Pisces people... They do have a tendency to work in uh, spaces where it's more structured because there's so much chaos going on with that you're like, whatever makes sense, like a logic sense, I need that. And it doesn't mean that it's wrong and you can continue doing it and it's perfect. Of course, you're not going to be changing your career if you don't want to. But like putting a, like a little thing. So, okay, like you um, as a rising and Pisces need to reconnect with your intuition. And with your dreams. So what is a little thing that you can do every morning? Or put a book next to your bed. And mm -hmm. every time you wake up, write down your dreams. Mm -hmm. It's oh. like the little things. Yes. You know. Do you have this written out? Yeah. For your kids? Like, like almost like a structure. Like, you, like you're not just c going through, like, here you have this, like, in front of you. Like, like a tool that other people can use is what I'm saying. Like, if I were to be like, hey, I'd love to do that. Uh -huh. Do you have this, like, written out where you can share it with other people? I didn't write kids? it like, like a book. Okay. No, I don't okay. have that. So I just do have, like, mentally... a six-week, and I have, like, because it's so individual. Yeah, yeah. You know, sure. like, I need a chart. But, but there are little, yeah, there are little things that you can implement to help. Your yes, kids. like my yeah. son has a Mars in the first house. Mm -hmm. He will always feel that he's the warrior and he will always look for competition. Mm -hmm. So I cannot be like telling him like no to this and no it's like no where we will gonna give the energy out you know so it can go out so you don't fight everywhere and you don't like compete with everyone all the time because you're not gonna have a good time. Mm -hmm. You know like that guidance. On a little small things every day, like okay, now go to uh, run around the block. Let's see who will be first. And, you know, like. Is there anything the out there for people to actually do what you're doing to implement for their kids or anything like that? Because I've not seen anything like that. I mean, there is already books. But, for, but uh, to this specific of what we're talking about right now. It's very hard to do it specific. Yeah. No, I, no, I mean, like, okay, so... Like, you know, generally specific. Yeah, yes. Like, I would, like, I can tell you this because I observe my son. Mm. Because then there are kids who have so. a Mars in the first house, but they can have, for example, uh, Neptune in the seventh, mm -hmm. and they can feel polarized, and they're super shy, and they're never competing, and, you know, like, and they will be moving between those two. And what they have to learn through life is connect them. But that's by time. It's not that we, as a parent, will teach them. We can start the base by, okay, you are going to compete. What do you like? Let's try to find out. And if you don't like this, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. You know, like the step, error. Okay, this didn't work. That's good. It's good to make errors because we learn from those. Yep. It's not like, okay, you're shy. Let's stay here. Don't go outside. No, because you have Mars there. So you could... So if someone were looking to do this, could they come to you, do the charts, and then you give them like an in-depth 
explanation of maybe things that they could implement into their yeah. children's life? I and then what that. would that take and or cost for somebody to come to you and do something? Because that sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> that doesn't sound like, oh, like, here's a chart. That sounds like, here's a chart, like, let me maybe meet with your kid or, like, you know, almost, like, write a small biography of mm -hmm. everything that recommendations that you would do for somebody like what does that take so uh i mean now what i'm doing is like i've done reading of charts for kids and it's like the one sitting with the parents like hey and here you have the information and you go mm -hmm. and you do whatever you want with them and you follow up with your children mm -hmm. you know but i never done like a long-term accompanying like w with adults like the six-week program and what i do with that it's like i don't uh it's on you because like i'm very uh lucky in my life that i don't have to be putting a price on my work <laughs> <laughs> Are you my stomach agrees yes well i don't usually eat till like 12 or something oh okay. so like yeah I, it's normal okay <laughs> He has that opinion too. Yes, okay. yeah, right. definitely. And uh, uh, so it's like whatever works for you. I just really love doing this work, and I feel that it's so much. Imp it's so important for people to have information about themselves, so mm -hmm. they can consciously decide if they want to stay where they are. In the meantime, like okay, let's go to the extreme. You feel that you're a victim in your life because things are happening to you and you're like, my life is horrible. So then, it, and I don't have, um, because I believe, and especially in California uh, or in the United States, I don't know, just in California, everything is super expensive. So uh, there is a lot of people that they cannot afford to have the information or they have to spend a lot of time by studying themselves and getting books and reading it and not everyone has the passion to do it or time or time exactly. <laughs> that's the big that's the big one i mean like the more people i meet like yourself it's like i want to do all these different things you know what i mean it's yeah. like it's like god i'd love to do that and find the time and, and do this with my daughter and mm -hmm. so on and so forth it's like wait that's that's a lifetime of information that you've downloaded mm -hmm. and then to like implement it and like all these other things it's just like you have to have passion there to really yeah. get into that. Yeah. And, you know, like it's not fair that just people who have a passion for it can have this information. Mm -hmm. And then what's going on too, like my husband, he doesn't understand astrology, of course, but he loves it. Mm -hmm. And then he has readings with other astrologers. He's like, can you translate it for me? <laughs> because, you know, like if I say, you have a moon in Gemini in your, sec in your third house, da -da -da -da, and you're like, what? You know, like it's different kind of language. Mm -hmm. And the third is different kind of language and it's okay so let's make it that's what i was saying like i want to take the veil of the like magic of the secret away from it and make it human mm -hmm. and make it affordable and make it uh, accessible and that everyone can understand it and can everyone can actually apply it to their life as i was saying like i have two kids so i need to find like little steps how to put Things that I'm supposed to do into my life. I was thinking it'd be cool to, I mean, I don't know all the depth in which like you dive in to like help people with like these six week programs, but it'd be interesting to create like a template mm -hmm. and then like they come back to you like every two weeks and they're filling in kind of the gaps mm -hmm. and then they're con conversing with you, maybe working with their kids to see uh, what they've learned in that process and then you give them a little bit more information like every, like feed them a yeah. little bit not because like you're saying sometimes all at once is too much but yeah. if they're able to come back to fill in the gaps at least it's a little bit more ease like and settle also, into like, it so with kids as they are little like we don't want to give so much information mm -hmm. like there are people who doesn't read uh charts for kids because they don't want to tell parents something and then the parents will gonna become obsessed with yeah. that. It's like, oh my God, yep. no, relax. So it has to be like very gentle information. I think all this needs to be gentle information. Yes. <laughs> Cause, Cause like for me it's intense, but I, I can I can definitely see other people like focusing on one thing and then they're like, oh my God, this is gonna happen. And they're gonna like make it happen. I mean, yeah. that's what's so crazy about life too, is like sometimes we, 
will think something and then we'll home in on it and then we'll recreate it in our own lives. I don't know. I have like a, I don't have very clear this theory of like manifesting by thinking about it. Mm -hmm. I have like a something, something triggers me there. And I didn't find out what it is. And I do believe that there are people to whom it works because I did read and seen like uh, examples. But I don't want like something in me is telling me like it's not just like that. Like for example, something would be like yeah. that person that is manifesting that. Mm -hmm. It's be not just because he wants it. It's because he's somehow feeling that it's something that it's will be in his life too. Mm -hmm. Does it make sense? Yes. It's not just like, I will be like, oh, I want to manifest a unicorn in front of your house. Yeah. Well, and I will go to manifest. Well, I think manifest is a yeah. crazy word. I too. know. I think it's like, it's a compilation of so many different things. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we're just like, oh, you need to think this. And then, of course, the English language is like so wonky, you know, because it's like, well, like, think? Like, I just think this? It's like, what does that even, yeah. what does think even mean? Like, you know, is that this? Is that that? Like, you know, so like... I think, you know, manifestation is like so many different things to, to create that. And I, I've seen manifestations come in front of me with just envisioning it yes. to like with such something, you know, where I put all of it into myself or in, in external self. And then it was just like, boom, it was like there, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So it's like, um, it's crazy to see that stuff too. And then something that has been so beautiful in my life is that I'm always trying to get to like the hundred percent, like what that actually means. And for me, that means like when you truly believe something like a hundred percent, it like does exist, you know, and not, maybe not for you. No, that, that's the thing. Like you I know? believe an uh, in term of human design, which I don't know about human design, mm -hmm. but this one thing is like we all manifest differently. Yeah. Like I was saying. Yep. So and also what I found out when I'm trying to manifest something that I really care and I really want it, most of the time it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. But when I'm manifesting something that I'm like, oh, I want the parking lot just in front, and then I'm like, and then it's there. Yeah, it's right there. You yeah. know, like when you're not putting like emotional weight or like. It depends mm -hmm. like there is something that the ego blocks it yeah I, I agree because I think there's different types of manifestation too mm -hmm. like sometimes like there's forward manifestation mm -hmm. and then there's inward manifestation mm -hmm. and so the inward manifestation is sometimes when you like genuinely want something and then you let it go and then it happens mm -hmm. and then there's the forward where it's like you're intently like, oh, I'm going to make this happen. And then it does appear, right? So there's like different ways to approach it. And there's probably like a million things in between that, mm -hmm. right? But sometimes it's amazing too when you're just like, you're like, oh, I don't need this. You know what I mean? And then it's like, exactly. here you go. And the universe is like, oh, you know, kind of thing. And you're just like, wait a second. I said I didn't need it anymore, you know? So it's so weird that it happens in all different ways, you know? And what, why I have like uh, there's like an inner conflict with it because mm -hmm. uh, like when you think the English thing mm -hmm. uh, and manifest, you can also manifest the negative things in your life. Yeah. And then from there is coming a lot of anxiety that is happening nowadays in people, mm -hmm. including me, because yeah. I'm like, oh, you're thinking again about this. Are you gonna manifest that too? And it's like. I oh, believe when that the, hit me hard. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I was doing that a couple of days ago where like, um, I had a trigger of something that happened and then it brought back all these energies of all this stuff, but I was aware of it cause I could feel myself thinking about it. But then I started getting angry at myself that I was thinking this stuff. And then I'm like, wait, now I'm just like on a snowball down the mountain to an avalanche. And then I started drinking and then going more inside my head. And then I was like, I was like, Oh, I'll just stop already. You know what I mean? Then I, I was like, what am I doing to, my, you know what I mean? It's just like that repetition. And then, and then it leads to sadness. Cause the end result is just like, you're upset. Mm -hmm. you're, you're angry at yourself. You're sad, you know? And you're just like, you're like, gosh, like why? You know? That's why like, I like, you know, have like this inner conflict. I don't think that it can be just like that. Mm -hmm. I don't think that we as individuals are so important that we can affect the life of other two. If it's not, 
there, I think that there is the line between uh, what you can create in your life and what is already that you have to live it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, definitely. So like, yeah, I can manifest my parking lot and I can manifest my car and my house and my work, blah, 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 but can I manifest that something will gonna happen to my child? Mm -hmm. No. You know, like, let's take a little bit of the importance from our sh shoulders. Yeah. Yeah. Just because, like, can, can I manifest that something happens to my child because I'm scared of it and, it, like, this thought is coming over and Yeah, over. I've had a lot of those types of thoughts, too, and those are... Of course you did. Yeah, <laughs> those, are, those are crazy thoughts that come to you because, like, you know, you sometimes when you realize, like, your power or certain things that you're capable of doing, you don't want to exude them like on other people, you know? So like you're I think sometimes I do worry about that kind of stuff. I'm like, I'm like, Ooh, I shouldn't be thinking like that. Like, why am I thinking like that? I sh I'm exuding, like I'm all influencing their future or something like that. And I'm like, that's such a crazy like idea to think like that. You know, that's, I think that's also like just an ego testicle, like exactly. idea like, people of, is telling you like, Oh, you have all this power. Yeah. You it's, it's like, like oh gosh, it's, 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 and that can be that to me, sometimes that can be shameful too, to like when you're thinking like that, where you're like, I'm actually thinking like that. Like that's a little crazy, like in the realm of craziness, you know? To, oh, but we are yeah. all crazy. Yeah, that's true. You know, like if we all would speak up and, uh, I mean, yeah, um, the Aquarius and when you have a strong Uranus, which you have, mm -hmm. there is a little bit more craziness. Oh, okay. So if we all would speak our mind oh, up, lots of crazy in there. we would be all locked up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. Definitely lots of crazy in there. Mm-hmm. What's one thing that you think you could tell me that you see in there that maybe I don't necessarily know or something that you see that's like really stands out to you that's something you're like maybe he doesn't know about this well, or something Well, I don't know you. Yeah. It's very hard to do that. Yeah, definitely. But I w <laughs> <laughs> But uh, I would definitely tell you like this is your base and then mm. every year you have uh, a solo return okay which is like every year you have a little bit different energy so you're rising in Pisces is for your life like the sensibility the dreams the that your intuition telling you like when your intestines are talking to you there mm -hmm. is something there's some message or where you have a goosebumps you're actually hitting something mm -hmm. you know and it's not logical it's like when I have a bad feeling because I'm going to sign up some contract listen to that bad feeling because otherwise it will gonna come back to you like a boomerang and mm. then, yeah you know oh yeah but then will be every year you have different rising for that year and, and so what does that mean exactly uh, exactly i'm gonna tell you like i don't know what is your rising right now because mm. i didn't do your uh solo return but my rising is gemini which is like very playful and very easygoing and uh uh, moving around and being the nomadic and uh, talking to people and connecting different things and stuff But my rising this year is Aries That's very like fire and I don't have fire in my uh, in my chart So it's like action for me. It's not very easy action for me, you know, like it's like I talk more I like talking mm -hmm. and this year I do have fire there and it's like this for example my year started with my husband having a con uh, convulsion next to me have blood and everything and doctors and stuff you know and it's like whoa what is that and then i'm like oh okay i got it mm -hmm. i was that it's like you have to act like the mind doesn't work you have to go you have to uh do things you have to say yes and how are you gonna give um uh the uh saliva oh the spanish is coming up uh like going out the energy of mm -hmm fight competition action and stuff so yep. whatever comes to my way this year it's like yeah I, i'm gonna do it even though my mind's saying oh maybe it's not a good idea mm -hmm. because it's an ego saying like all this you're doing it's gonna shift and ego doesn't want to die and if i'm changing the ego how it was is dying so you know mm -hmm. or for example um and our example there was a person and that person had that year uh, rising in Taurus. Which means that this year you're going to be learning a lot of patience. Normally things can happen for you very fast and easily. And that year it's like 
doesn't mean that the things are not gonna happen it's just it will gonna take time and you have to learn that everything takes its time and it has a process and you know like all that so it's like even though you're rising in a Pisces sometimes you can have ears very different feelings and it has to be like more a materialistic oriented or more a mentally oriented not so much emotionally the emotions will be their own ways but they are like different quests for your life uh, so i haven't had a reading in a long time mm -hmm. uh, but it's i'm always curious to know like a couple of years ago it felt like i had to die if that makes sense mm -hmm. because like uh, i had to leave behind like everything and now I'm always like wondering, I'm like, what was going on with the stars and the planets ah, at that time? Okay. You know, because I lost like friends, family, pe people died, COVID lost all my businesses, all my money. Like it was all like one year of like, you know, it was like the universe's way, you know, and, yeah, like literally like, um, like not even coming out of the cocoon is like somebody stepping on you and being uh -huh. like, let's see if you can survive being squished, you oh. know? How is your father? How is he? Uh -huh. What do you mean? Like, uh, like how he is. Oh, how, well, how was he or how He's, is he now? How was he? Well, how was he? Uh, my father was a very crazy person. Mm -hmm. to say the least. Um, he died a couple of years ago mm -hmm. uh, from an overdose and uh, he was um, a great teacher in my life mm -hmm. uh, for all the things that he did wrong. Yeah, because you've learned a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it's, fu it's funny though too because like I would say like I, and I think I mentioned this in one of my other podcasts, um, like he's I have the best relationship that I have with my dad now than I ever had, mm -hmm. like, my entire life. And I, he talks to me all the time, like, you know, and uh, some of the stuff he says is, like, amazing, you know, and I feel so honored to get to where I'm at now because it's literally opposite of where it was in other part of my life, mm -hmm. you know. So, um, yeah, that's... Did that yes, yeah, that, that, yeah, that explains and that answers. Yeah. And you said, like, that he died from overdose. Mm -hmm. That was another thing, like, when you have um, rising in uh, Pisces, you can have a tendency to be running away from reality mm. into uh, addictions. And it can be all kind of addictions. Uh, like, addiction doesn't have to be just drugs or alcohol. It can be... Uh, TV, uh, books, it can, you know, like whatever in excess that is like, I'm feeling overwhelmed, I have to run away from it, or I'm scared of the reality, I'm just gonna like get into my fantasies. It's mm -hmm. like, I see how that. Yeah, I definitely feel like I have, um, I live in a fantasy mm -hmm. sometimes because I want everything to be fairy book. Like, mm -hmm. tell, like, you know, like, yeah. does that make sense? Yes, of like, course. I, like, I just, I, like, I love that world because mm -hmm. I think also that world is true to me. Like, mm -hmm. I, like, sometimes when I think, like, oh, I can't get this or, like, you know, like, or I make this happen for somebody or I give this some, this beautiful life to somebody, um, I think that it inspires me to also acquire that because I know it is true. And then when I get it, I'm like, oh, this is true. You know what I mean? Because, like, I, like, I was able to start from nothing and then within a couple of years like have this house have all these amazing things because i live in that fantasy world because i'm like i believe it mm -hmm. and because i believe it, i can acquire it like that because i know it's just right in front of me it's just like sometimes people look at a mirage as like a fake thing and i don't mm -hmm. look at mirages as fake i look at it as like a manifestation of your head of what you're seeing it's just grasping it is the hardest part you know what i mean to connect it with the reality yes to connect it to bring it into to act the, into, into to this reality it, yes. you know what i mean because like some people envision amazing things and it's like but how do you get bring that into this physical it's not easy to do but like because i feel like i live in that it's much easier for me to just pull it into this world you know so I think that's a beautiful thing for me, but sometimes it can also slap me in the face mm -hmm. because 
other times like I'll be like, oh, it's going to work out like this today. And it's magical and fairy dust, you know, and then the, the world's just like, no, like here's a shit on your head kind of thing. And I'm like, wait a second. It's supposed, to, it's supposed to be fairy dust, not crap. You know what yeah. I mean? And then I'm like, this isn't fair. And I'm like, screw you world, you know, kind of thing. But I, at the same time, I love living like that. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's a, it's, you know, it can be hard to deal with, but it doesn't stop me. That's the thing. It doesn't mm. stop you. And you still like keep going. There's a lot of people who just like, no, it doesn't work. So mm -hmm. it doesn't work. Yeah, no, most of, the, most of the time, like, you know, I think um, that is, it's, like, there's been, if I were to have a scale of things, I would say a trillion times out of, you know, zero or whatever, like, it always weighs in my favor to see that reality, because there's been things that I've believed in, and then I've seen them, and I was like, wait, that's not even possible, or to... The majority of the planet that's not physically possible and then mm -hmm. when you see it as a reality you're like wait a second and then when you do that a million times over then eventually your brain just like switches over and you're like no this is real you know what i mean and then you just know it's real and then you never go back to to whatever you exactly. know what i mean yeah, yeah, yeah. And i know I, and I that, know, that's been my life like i've gotten to the point now where i'm like wait no like even though something might come across me where it's gonna try to affect that other side I'm like pfft, like you know what I mean like that's just the universe or whatever testing me to see if it's gonna even get in there mm -hmm. ever so slightly and I'm like it's not going to because adversely I've experienced the beauty trillions of times you know what I mean so like mm -hmm. it's not gonna happen but yeah um, I live in a fantasy world. <laughs> they guess that. Yes. I mean, we all do, right? I don't know. I think people, sometimes I've met people that live in a hellish perspective. But can it be that fantasy too? Okay, yes. If you want to, if that is their fantasy of a weird, morbid yeah, fantasy. Yeah, exactly. For sure. Yeah. Yes. I see that. Like I read in one book, I, uh, that 10%. Your life is 10% what happens to you and 90% with you, how you perceive it and mm -hmm. see it and work with it. Yep. Which would be like very much confirmation of what you're saying. Oh, yeah. And I do s believe that too. I'm mm -hmm. just holding the book and I can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's crazy. I mean, like, what do, you, what do you think of that? Do you, like, I mean, since we have certain things similar, do you feel like you live in that type of fantasy world or...? Because, I mean, a lot of this stuff, too, is very, like, fantasy-esque. Sometimes I'm asking, like, where did they take <laughs> out, like, all these theories that if you have a Pluto in your 8th house, that means that and that. It's like, who came up with that? Mm -hmm. I don't think that they did research on people, like, oh, let's see. So, this is the group of people like that. Let's see how their life goes. No, of course not. Mm -hmm. Like, who channeled it from where, like, yeah. how, you know? Or maybe they did. It's a compilation of millions of years of following people to but see I mean, that, too. Yeah, exactly. But, I, you know, like, astrology is ancient. It also, like, sometimes, though, when I see stuff like that, it almost feels super scientific. That's the crazy part of it, too, because I'll talk to people where they're like, this isn't science-based, like, the, you know what I mean? And then I'm like, wait, if, like... If you were to take like this star and measure it to like this point, like that's a number, mm -hmm. right? So then theoretically you can start to work, you know, because a lot of the equations that are interrelated into this are so factual based. And then it almost feels like a science more than like theoretical sometimes to me. We're almost like, you know, because we look at the Mayans sometimes, for example, and we're like, oh, that's all theoretical mumbo jumbo. But the more we're learning about them and like their knot system and how they actually took note of all these precise mm -hmm. measurements, you start to realize, no, this isn't theoretical. This is freaking thousands of years of them like, uh, da, 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 like doing a little right. knot measuring every fucking like little precise thing. And then you look at this and you're like, oh, this is, who did thought of this? Maybe they were channeling. Maybe it was freaking millions of years of them like, I, uh, yeah. uh, and then watching people and talking with them and being like, what had happened with you today? You know, like we can see that this, but we're not going to ask you specifically. 
and then they write it down, and then they have an accumulation of books, you know, like, you know, the, 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 I don't, the I don't, we don't know. We don't know, but exactly. I, but you see what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. there's a, definitely a connection in there where sometimes I feel like this has so much more true, um, factual, precise measurements of things, and I feel so, I feel offended sometimes when people are like, this is, like, you know, it's not nonsense, and I'm like, no, like, if you only knew, and you could feel where this came from, I feel like just so many people gave their lives to this, you know, like, mm -hmm. just like there were people, like, that all they did was study this, and they did that for their entire life, and they would pass it on to their kids, and their t kids, and it just went on for hundreds of generations, I feel like this is what that is, you know, it's not just this, like, oh, somebody just sat there and channeled and just, like, Stuff. Maybe I mean, that's part of it. You know? Yeah, and you know, like we don't like. That's why I'm saying like it's fury because we don't know mm -hmm. where is the truth, and that's why I like I was gonna answer your question if I live in a fantasy. Mm -hmm. I believe I do, but I believe that we all do live in a fantasy, and that yeah. I can understand the astrology in a certain way, and the other person can understand your chart in a different way. And we're gonna connect with in one point again, but there can be like different ways to it. Like there are more uh, dramatical astrologies that they will be telling you like, oh my god, what happened to your father? Like did he die? You know like yes, I've, you know? I've also met with those people too, and that that has always been a little bit like adverse for me when people are like uh, too already they know kind of thing. Does that make sense? Or like they they've figured me out kind of thing i've met i've met like um i uh, bought bought me a whole package one time and this thing was like 10 pages or so of like an explanation of mm -hmm. things and the guy was like like you, this happened to you and, then, and i was like i was like wait like was it true did it happen um there was there was i mean like it was really in depth and a lot of things were definitely like right on point mm -hmm. but i almost felt like it was so he he knew me like you know what i mean it was like that like i know i from the second you're here like all the way up to now and then i know your whole future kind of thing and i was like damn like okay like let me sit down with you you uh -huh. know and then he's like oh you want to sit down with me like i cost like five thousand dollars a day you know and and like you want like you come come have lunch with me that that like that's going to be expensive and i'll tell you your whole life kind of thing and i was like mm. I don't know. I was like, this is good enough for now, because I was like, I, I, don't, I don't know if I even want to do that. You but know? then I believe, you know, like there are people who wants that kind of person. Yeah. And then there are people who wants me kind of person. Mm -hmm. You know, like there's like fit for everyone, and yep. I love that. Yep. And there is nothing wrong with any of them. Mm -hmm. Uh, but uh, I do love the feeling of that there are things coming out, of course. But then I want to give you the tool to come up with it. Like when you said, uh, you said something uh, about uh, when we were talking about the bosses and stuff. And you said that you're not very good with like authorities and stuff. Something was there. I was like, you said it yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, because like I like when it's that. I don't like mm -hmm. to be telling people. I love to be uh, question, questioning more. Mm -hmm. Like giving questions. Like guiding you through questions like... You give yourself the information. Yes. Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, so I've been like a hypnotherapist and like a life coach mm. and stuff like that in my life. And um, I always tend to find like the best people that I've ever worked with as like a life coach or hypnotherapist or things, those types of modalities. They're always just sitting there like shaking their head. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then every once in a while they're like, let's talk about that. And then you yeah. start, you start talking about, and he's like, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean and then after you're done I'm like oh god that was so great thank you, you know? you're amazing he's like mm, <laughs> yes you're like, amazing. Mm, yes you're amazing and you're like ah oh, you know like because I think that when you get to a certain level and you've figured out some more of yourself you're like exuding that like your 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 energy is kind of exchanging mm -hmm. and it doesn't always have to be so vocal no. You know what I mean? You're just like, together you're working stuff out. And I mm -hmm. think that's such a beautiful thing too. And I think some of the the, the greatest masters or like teachers or gurus have figured out 
that to where like you're just you can sit with somebody and you're working everything out because they've worked that stuff out mm -hmm. you know you don't always have to like vomit all this information information is necessary to get things going right like i've learned through reiki and symbolic value and all these different things sometimes it's necessary to give people symbols so they they can mm -hmm. start to work through things but eventually like the great masters let go of all of that it's not necessary because you create your own symbols and those symbols for yourself have meaning to heal and do everything else but it's good to have like the the starting point oh yes from where to... it's and i've learned that too it's so necessary like you have to you have to start from somewhere you can't mm -hmm. just be like oh, i got it you know and you're like no you don't <laughs> you know like you have to you have to be giving a foundation of how to work from and sometimes it's necessary for those foundations to be solid to stand on because i think that a lot of what society is giving through some of these different types of modalities that are just like sand you know and a lot of times people can say this that and the other and you stand on and you're like whoa this still isn't right you know because there's a lot of wish-washy like stuff out there too and i think it's important that we remind people that it's not us healing you it's you healing, healing yourself. yourself you know i think that's super important to start from because i think with younger people these days they're always like give me give me give me the answers mm -hmm. you know kind of thing like heal me kind of thing and i see it so much and i'm like man that's like it's not a necessarily a negative way to approach things but at the same time it's like i don't think you're going to get a lot of answers but don't you think it's based also like and uh, i'm not uh how do you like negative of a medicine at all like I do believe that we have a medicine for a reason and we have like this holistic approach too and I would love to connect those two and it's amazing that like that is happening but you know like the base of I go to a doctor and the doctor solve this situation for me because I get a pill and then I feel good mm -hmm. it's that like I don't need to work on anything I just have to drive to the doctor and tell him like hey I feel this 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 what are you gonna do mm -hmm. it's like oh I will gonna heal you here you go you know yeah so it's that mm -hmm. it's like how the system take us to understand that and just through experience which i think that uh you said the younger younger people nowadays mm -hmm. yes we are young too <laughs> we are young but still i mean you know they were gonna get there yes i was like when i was i don't know 16 like i was always like a big mouth but you know like i wasn't like this either I think we're coming through like a huge spiritual awakening. I think that, you know, I can feel it on a worldly sense. And I think it's so magical right now that, you know, a lot of people, and one of the reasons like I wanted to create this whole podcast is to go against the grain of, I think what, what a lot of what's out there is so much negativity. But I, I think that through all of this, actually it's the complete opposite. I think we're going through like a metamorphosis of this beautiful change and growth on a, on such a, a worldly presence. And I, I think it's amazing, but at the same time, people are like reaching out so strongly to figure out what it is that needs to solve them, you know? And I think sometimes like the greatest solving comes from just like sitting down and just like not reaching out, you know, just being like present mm -hmm. and, and realizing that like, every moment is has so much beauty in it and that beauty is also part of the healing and that healing will heal you and and so on and so forth and i think that more importantly there's so many people out there like yourself and why i created this podcast is just show people like look there's so many ways you can go out and seek this information and if this is right for you that is your medication mm -hmm. you don't like it's not always going and getting something from the doctor or doing this spiritual medicine or you know because i i meet so many people um you know crossing paths with people and they're like i'm gonna go do ayahuasca and go do this and that you know they're like this from there i'm gonna be like it's mm -hmm. good, yeah, like i'm transformed it'll be and it, it, it like it does you know it's gonna help them in, in many different ways but I don't always feel like that's the answer. I feel like sometimes you need to find what your medicine is 
mm-hmm. whether it's through the doctor or, or like going and doing something like that. And I don't think that it's just one thing. Oh, of course. Or it can be for someone. Mm-hmm. You know, like that's the thing. Like in numerology, I'm sick, so for me, it's like everything works. Mm-hmm. Like everyone has to find their own truth and or like their own tool. Yes. And it doesn't have to be just one, or it can be just one. Mm-hmm. Like there's no one who will, or it cannot be just one person, or it can be just one person, or it can be just ayahuasca, mm-hmm. and then you're good. But there can be like no, yeah. I'm gonna screw you up more. You know, <laughs> like, there's like everything is possible. But if we don't start doing things, mm-hmm. because then there is like okay, there's so many options. <gasps> Panic, freaking mm-hmm. out! I cannot. I don't know what. So it's like okay, start to do a little. Mm-hmm. Maybe starting by sitting down and not doing nothing for an hour. That like most people cannot do. Yeah, yeah, or, or, or concentrate on something for five minutes. I mean. That's... Okay. Yeah, I went for one hour. You got for five minutes. I got it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. even that these days, like for me, like I struggle with that a lot. Mm-hmm. I mean, because I have multiple businesses, all these different things. Who I, who I need to contact today? Just things going through my head. And, man, just sitting down for five minutes, just like one thing you know it's like wow it's it's, it's incredible to tr- do that you know i think that it's so yeah. like there's so many tools and so much information that it can seem like that doing something has to be very complicated but what you're saying it is actually very simple mm-hmm for example, like what is the cure for anxiety? Sit right now, right now, like, you know, like, and it's easy for me to say because I'm very mental, like I have a lot of air in my chart and it's like, I read something and it makes sense immediately and it's very easy for me to apply it to my life. So it's like for me anxiety, it's like, oh, I feel anxious now. Why am I feeling anxious? Because I'm thinking about this and that. Is it happening right now? No. Do I have opportunity to do something about it to prepare myself or to um uh like do the this doesn't happen yes i can okay i'm gonna do it now no i don't so there's no way why i have to worry about it Mm -hmm. like i have just this present moment you know you're great at that i can feel it (laughs) in my my wife too she has like so much of her charge air signs and like sometimes i'm like Uh, like even like listening to you I'm like I get emotional just hearing it because I'm like oh my god that just sounds like so amazing that you can do that you know like for me it's like so hard you know you cannot do it so easily you have a lot of water there yeah for you the only thing is to feel it but mm -hmm. not think yeah I try and think it out and then it's like that sucks because I mean I don't know what it is but I think especially this year, like I've had, I've struggled with so much anxiety, you know, I'm like always trying to like work it out. And I've, I've done, uh, I've, I know I've overcome leaps and bounds in figuring it out, but man, like sometimes I'll talk to, talk to my wife, for example, who has all these air signs in her chart. She's like, just do this. And I, I can even see her struggle with something in a moment. And then the next moment it's gone, like uh-huh. completely. And I'm just like, <sighs> like so amazing you know like how do you like how do you do that and it's like I can see you talk about it too and I was like man I hope that I can get to that point you know I think that you can get to that point very differently because you do have an air but your air is just moon Mm -hmm. there is not enough mental part Mm -hmm. and also it's like you get into your head like thinking it in the moment when you feel panic when you feel that there is something scary going on. Mm-hmm. You get into your head there. And that doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, that doesn't help. You know. So for you. It would be more connect with your body. Which goes like. What I love very much. It's like. What am I starting to feel. When I feel anxious. It's like. Okay. There are those thoughts. That cause me anxiety. What do I feel physically? Where do you feel your anxiety physically? It's hard to say. I think that's one of the most frustrating parts. Like, Do you feel that your hands shake? Do you feel them tense? Do you feel your heart breaks? Do you feel your intestines like going harder? What is the physical feeling? I don't feeling? know. Exactly. So <laughs> next time when you're anxious, yeah. get from the head and from the thoughts. Mm-hmm. Feel physical. 
I literally feel like the best way I could describe it is like my soul is going to leave my body. But that's, again, your head. Mm, okay. Explanation. That's the closest I can you know? feel from, like, put a... Because that would be like behind. fear. My soul wants to leave my body. Or, you know, like, what is the emotion there? We are not talking about the emotions here. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to put you into your body mm -hmm. to feel what the body... Because your body doesn't recognize what is the reality and what is the thought. Mm -hmm. Like, the brain makes it and the body lives it. And it doesn't know if it's this or if it's here. So to help to put you back into your present moment, it's like what my body feels. Not that the soul will gonna leave. That's very abstract. You need something concrete there. Mm -hmm. What is going on right now? You know? Or you can no, not gonna do that. Yeah, just get into your body and you can write down the physical feeling. And what happens is that by time when you do this practice, it's like next time when the anxiety is start to coming in, you will first feel the body like, I'm about to become anxious again. The thoughts are starting to coming up. Mm -hmm. What am I going to do to not get into that leap? Yeah. I've done certain practices, especially with like different breathing techniques to lean into it to help myself. But at the same time, like I'm, I don't know where the anxiety comes from. And but you don't need to know that. Yeah, it's true. I don't. And it's... with the with the breathing, mm -hmm. I don't know like what kind of breathing exercise. I just like feel when we are like breathe through something. Mm -hmm. It's like that you're suppressing it. Mm -hmm. You're relaxing your body and you're like changing your mind and all good. Instead of like uh, not relaxing because then it's like, no, I'm not going to let you do that. I'm not going to mm -hmm. let you out, you know? Yeah. Instead of like, for, I will gonna give you an example. So I feel very anxious about that something could happen to my husband, like when he had the seizure there, you know. So uh, I start to have those thoughts and it's like, oh my God, you're there again. So it's not that I'm like, no, no, nothing. Everything is good. Like I will gonna breathe for it. No, it's like, okay, what do I feel? I feel my intestine burning. I feel my heart closed and I'm there and there are no more thoughts mm -hmm. about my husband or something can happen or whatever or am I manifesting this and it will gonna happen am I uh, freaking me out and how, you know it's like it's me and my body there is nothing about the mind mm -hmm. and that I do feel that physical feeling I give a space to the phys physical feeling does it make sense mm -hmm. you know so I, it's not like Oh, my intestines burn, so I will gonna try to relax it and breathe into it. No, I just sit down and I'm present with that burning feeling and with the crumble around my heart, and I leave it be, mm. and it dissipates by itself when I'm not feeding it up with thoughts. Does it make sense? Yes, yeah, it definitely does. I tried. I've tried leaning. Well, I've learned a lot by leaning into the intensity of like what you're talking about, and I mm -hmm. think that's really. I found a lot of healing in that because. For like a year, anytime like I would feel started to feel the anxiousness or like the running away kind of feel, I'd lean into it mm -hmm. and it's helped me heal mm -hmm. in certain ways. But yeah, I definitely understand what you're saying with like I'm trying to breathe through it and let it go, but then it comes back. You know, what I mean, I'm constantly breathing and letting it go or whatever, and then but it's not really solving anything. It's mm -hmm. like I'm not I'm not figuring it out. Yeah, and don't was... try to figure it out mm -hmm. or don't try to solve it. That's all it is. So what is this it's your, of... like, the safe zone. Your safe zone is the head. Mm. It's like where you feel like, like, theoretically, the moon. So it's the mother. So it's like where you feel safe. It's mm. your mind to reasoning everything. But your rising in Pisces is pure emotion. It's mm -hmm. pure feeling. And the moment when you try to put it into words, then it's like... <laughs> No, it doesn't work because it doesn't make sense. Yeah. And it gives me more anxiety because I cannot describe it and I cannot understand it. Mm. You know? <laughs> yeah. I just love this. Yeah. No, I definitely, I felt that too. Like, I can't, it's hard, you know, to talk to people, even like my own partner sometimes, because she's like, what are you feeling right now? And I'm just like, I, like, I can't, there's no words to give to you. You know, because mm -hmm. you want to, she's like, I need you to talk, exchange, 
give me something. And I'm so like, I, 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 yeah, so I can understand. I'm like, I don't have anything to give right now. Cause I, like everything I'm feeling is like raw emotions. And then sometimes too, like I've scared her also because she's like, what are you feeling right now? I'm like, do you really want to know? Because here's a little tidbit of what I'm feeling. She's like, you're feeling that that's like horrifying. You know what I mean? And I'm like, that's only a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm like, then I feel like uh, I can't give that to anybody because there's only been like maybe two people in my entire life where I've shared that and then have like given me a hug, you know, because they, under they understand, they understand, oh, okay. you know, like they got, they got it. They like, and I can feel that they get it, you know, but sometimes when I tell other people, they're like, dude, like you're nuts or like, you know, or like, that's like, how could you, like, you should be in a sane asylum or, or like, you know what I mean? something along those lines. So I'm like, I can't give that to anybody. No one can understand like what that feels like, you know, cause the things that I know that I've gone through now, which is horrifying for some people. Mm -hmm. And then also in other lives that I've remembered of things that I've gone through, I was like, you have no idea, you know, so to give a little bit of that to somebody that maybe has more air signs mm -hmm. in their chart, there's like, I, that's like, how could you even go there? You know what I mean? Kind of feeling and it's, it's crazy to, to, to not be able to sit down with your partner and share those types of things, you know, or for them to understand unless... And also like with partner, it's more complicated because like there is this emotion involved. It's like, I'm worried about you because mm -hmm. I love you and I want you to be okay. And you know, like I take kind of like, I want you to, to be happy. So I want to do things to be, so you're happy. Mm -hmm. So it's different with my partner. Like I'm imagining my partner that has a lot of air, and it's like, oh my god, you feel anxious. I want to help you out. How I'm gonna help you out? Like you know, I want you to feel good. Instead of like talking with you, I can listen to you way more uh, neutral and understand you. Yes. Because there is no emotional involved. Mm -hmm. You know, there is a sympathy, of course. You know, like it's not like like I'm a piece of ice. No. <laughs> But you know, like, uh, it's uh, when but going back with reading the charts for kids, mm -hmm. like Pisces kids, it's hard if you as an heir parent has a Pisces kids, it's like, and all like, you know, like now it's like, talk with your children, what is going on and listen to them and stuff. And then the kids is like, I don't know. You know, like, I'm just feeling this and I want to break this because I feel frustrated. But, you know, and the parents are like, if I don't understand you, I cannot help you. Mm. It's like, you don't have to help them. Yeah. You just be present. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I definitely feel that. I think that's so important sometimes just to be as a parent. It's like, you don't always have to solve stuff. Or as a par partner yeah. too. Or partner, just sit. Yeah. Sit, listen, not do anything. Just be present, you know like not always have to like say stuff you know like sometimes I think some some of the most healing moments like I've shared is just being feeling the presence of just like sitting and like not saying mm -hmm. you know what I mean and sometimes that's more healing just for someone to just be present with you knowing that they care about you but they don't have to say anything because you're like you're angry or you're sad but you can't get it out but they're just there with you, you know what I mean? That sometimes, for me, that's more than enough, you know, just to have somebody to share that mm -hmm. with you without having to say anything. And also like to change uh, the way how we f saw, see emotions, mm -hmm. that they're like the positive emotions and negative emotions and put it like they're just emotions. Yeah, it's just energy. Exactly. You know, so it's just... And you just feel them all. Mm -hmm. You just feel them and give them space and they will gonna leave. The same way like, I'm sad and I'm crying, like I'm suffering that way more than when I'm happy, like the extreme of happiness, it will gonna go away and this one will gonna go away too. Well, yeah, that's a crazy way to put it too. What do you think? I don't know, just the, the extremes of what you just said, I don't know, just makes sense, like extreme either side opposites or whatever, you know. And we cannot live in extremes, mm -hmm. when you live try to be here in the happiness like uh uh when my first therapist that she's amazing and i love her very much and we are friends now but um which is not correct <laughs> right now, but no <laughs> we were when we first started <laughs> uh you know like she was telling me like 
the goal, what we want is to be in the middle. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, when you're happy, when you have this extreme happiness, there has to be always a balance and you will have to get into the extreme, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. the negative way of that. So what we want is like going smoothly, mm -hmm. accepting that when I'm sad, I'm tired, but then I'm happy, but I'm not like, oh my God, I'm ecstatic because I did that and I'm amazing and sad because then it would, there will be like going deeper. Yeah. Oh going yes. And, and it's crazy you said that too, because just within the past couple of years of going through lows that I didn't even think were possible, it taught me that uh, there's also a whole nother realm of the opposite of that mm -hmm. it's just it's, it's like it's like the universe expanding it's like also the emotional bandwidth of like you know everything like if you start going lower it doesn't it doesn't mean that it just goes lower it's everything yeah you know it goes just ex ways. it goes both ways and i've extre i've experienced crazy revelations of i wouldn't say like happiness but just like a deeper understanding of the human emotion and love okay. and compassion of things, not being like, I'm the happiest I've ever been. Yeah, that's why, ah, you know, like, that's why I think is the middle way of like a yeah. accepting, uh, like I'm accepting everything and I love and you know, like the unconditional love and accepting and stuff. Mm -hmm. I do believe that that is the middle. It's not neutral of like, mm, yeah, neutral is a weird word. No, neutral is such a strange word. Not getting there. Yeah, like it's funny because like neutral to me i've like an expression that i've always like seemed to understand is like with the buddha the buddha like is in this like perfect trance like state but it's slightly smiling mm -hmm. have you seen that mm -hmm. you know there's like a little tinge of like you know what i mean so it's like that level of like happiness appreciation but you're not like oh you know what i mean you're not like ecstatic, you're not ecstatic. you know you're just like you just like and that to me has always resonated in my life at least to live that way you know because you don't want to go extreme this way or extreme that way it's just like appreciation mm -hmm. you know is the perfect way to live in every moment but also finding that is a, a task in mm -hmm. and of itself you know because i feel like if you live through that resonance frequency things just come to you it's just it's naturally a universal law where it's like if you're always taking an appreciation for everything more will come to you and then you take appreciation of it and it's just more appreciation and it keeps on going with, with everything you know I think that's like the one of the lessons I've learned in this lifetime you know so anyway I don't know how long we've gone me neither me neither and I was like always I was like Oh, yeah, time will time will just start doing this when you. And I could these... react to what you just said too. Mm -hmm. I would be like, yeah, but I do believe that that happens all the time. It's mm -hmm. just like when your focus goes on, oh my god, this is good and this is horrible. That feels horrible, and or you like, oh my god, this feels so good and this is not exactly what I wanted. But what am I gonna learn from it? Or okay, I'm not getting that way because this is like a sign that. I don't really want to be living in this kind of realm. So we're going to shift a little bit. You know, like seeing it like the point what you see. Is it 10% and 90? Mm -hmm. So, you know, like it always happens. That light will always bring you what you're supposed to do. But you take it from the position of from where. Mm -hmm. Does it make sense? Yeah. Yeah, definitely does. Uh, I know that you have to get to other stuff this mm -hmm. evening. Um, you got My children. Yes, your children. Uh -huh. I, so my uh, my day usually with my daughters today. So mm -hmm. it's like daddy daughter day oh. kind of thing. And so we always have the same. We have a routine of what we do, at, like every weekend. That's why, like like Friday or Saturday is my podcast day. So that's like <gasps> me, me time learning, kind of thing. And then the rest of the week's like work time. And then Sunday is like my daughter time where I in, just solely give her like attention, attention yeah, like and interfered with your time no with your no that's not what i'm saying no like what i'm getting from you now is going to be a return on the energy that i give oh, to her also love to hear that. yeah because it's all it's all a reciprocal thing you know but usually like we start a day with uh meditation mm. stretching 
-hmm. and then we do um, boxing and then kickboxing. You see, you are doing the energy <laughs> outcome there. Like, yeah. I so love that, that. That's usually, and then after that, it's usually cleaning. <laughs> so that's our day. It's like. Let me see. Where's the yeah the cupboard going? Like, cleaning. <laughs> yes. So that's that's our like Sunday, and then some. A lot of the time, if it's not well, it's super hot today, but usually we garden. Mm -hmm. too so like those are the like five different things that we do like on our sunday together that's beautiful you know? and i think that's important too like for your kids just like complete attention mm -hmm. you know what i mean but of course like i think this is necessary too because i've learned a lot from you and then she's always like oh what did you guys talk about and like you know what i mean does she listen to the podcast uh not so much but we talk about it because okay. she want like she wants to become a professional youtuber my son too. I don't like, know where near. You know, I'm like, so what, I'm like, do you want to become a doctor? And no, I want to become a professional freaking YouTuber. And I'm like, what does that even mean? You know what I mean? Like these, but these days, like you see, you know, certain people doing that and they're like, man, yeah. you make a thousand times more than me in an hour becoming a professional YouTuber. So I think yeah. it's, I think it's great. And she, she incorporates all her, um, drawings and ideas and she does like role play and like movies and she mm -hmm. puts it all into the YouTube stuff and it's crazy because uh, she she showed me a couple of days ago where other people were taking her videos and literally just posting her videos to get likes on their stuff she's like dad these all these people are copying me and I was like I was like, man, if people were doing that to my stuff, I'd be like so ecstatic. You know what I mean? I was like, I'm like, people are copying me. Like they're taking my videos and posting on their flip. I'm like, that's amazing. I'm like, you should be so ecstatic because you know you're onto something when mm -hmm. people are copying you and literally taking your videos and, and just putting on their stuff. I'm like, you have no idea. She's like, really? And I was like, yeah, like you're doing amazing. You she know? is Leo. She doesn't want to be copied. Oh yeah. She's a, she's, she's a, a queen. Yes, uh, we already know that she's she's like definitely more introverted with some things, but when she's like speaks her mind, her it, it, uh, it comes, creative expression. Yeah, it comes out. And she's like serious about certain things, and that's when we see that line come out. And she's like ferocious, and we love it. Mm -hmm. But she's like you know she's definitely not that until it's something like that where she's mm -hmm. very special. We're like wow. It's like amazing so yeah we see that and um, so that being the case um, usually I start off every podcast by just saying thank you so much you know for coming out here I appreciate you driving all this way and uh, I'm glad we could like connect and do this and I'd love to I just I would love to learn so much more and I'd love to implement certain things with my daughter mm. too you know, because she's so complex okay. and I, I would really like to understand more of who she is so that I can help guide her mm -hmm. with certain things. So I'd love to work with you more of what that is because um, I think it's it's so important and I see that the, the benefit of doing that and that's why I was asking in depth of like would you create this for somebody and do this because sure. I, was, I was like I think it'd be so beautiful to do that I think there's so many parents out there that even though they don't know it they they can feel the how it could help them so immensely with working understanding their children mm -hmm. you know because sometimes it's we have such little time especially in the united states with work 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 mm -hmm. and then we have time with our kids and we're trying we're those little times we're trying to figure them out you know what i mean it's not so much figure them out it's just like if you understand where they're going yeah a little bit it can help put your mind at ease it's amazing you example know? with my older son that's the warrior mm -hmm. with the mars and one uh he doesn't have any air in his chart mm -hmm. so he was now going for two years to a public school and he had such a bad time Mm. and I knew that he's not gonna have a good time in the public school because it's very like your body has to be still and your mind has to be focused oh God, and was, he cannot do I that. couldn't do it I couldn't do it either was... and then so you know like so he's coming home with all those like notes and stuff I'm like I know that you're not a bad kid you're just not having a good time mm -hmm. let's find a different way yeah so we found a different way and he's happy yeah and he doesn't what was have that way? 
Uh, it's a combination of homeschooling and nature school and uh, it's like here what works it's amazing that you can uh, register yourself under charter school so they give you funds mm -hmm. so you can pay your uh, like a private schools and uh, wow. like support you with uh, homeschool enrichment center you put them so they ha still have like a socializing mm -hmm. so he like you just um, put your daughter or me and my son to uh, things that you want him to study or he wants to study of course you know like that he's good in mm -hmm. he doesn't have to study everything he has a basis of things but he gets deep already since he is kid into what he likes in that time and that as he is like very physical and competitive so you put him a lot of sport and a lot of moving mm -hmm. you know and he is Sagittarius so he needs like open spaces and nature that's mm -hmm. what calms his nervous system so then he has two days of nature school climbing on the trees learning about plants and you know and that's what you learn from we need to talk about that out outside that. of this because yeah. like it's so funny and I'll just bring this up really quick we were talking about manifestation mm -hmm. and all last night me and my wife were talking about this and it's just so funny like you're we were like we need to have an answer to some of these things because we like it didn't work for you yeah for, exactly and she's like it works for me because i'm like opposite of you like i'm like i was always teacher's pet i had to get the best grades possible and i was like every time i went to school felt like i was going to prison for a day you know, I was like, here you go, yeah. let's shut the bars and like have fun. And like, it was horrifying for me, you know, and, like I came to understand it, but it was still like a wreck for me. And we can see that Erilyn is almost like a combination of us, but more so like me in certain regards with school. And so we, last night we were just like, we need to find some answers for this because we don't want to continue this process. Cause mm -hmm. look, look at how it affected you. Like now i have all these different issues well not maybe not issues but things with authority well oh, but you have you would have that anyway. regardless yeah, it, it is there you okay. were born with that okay regardless but now maybe it didn't help you know what i mean mm -hmm. because now i'm like so adverse to it you know what i mean so like we're trying to find different ways to allow her to have a better process with learning mm -hmm. but enjoying herself and you know all these different things so Definitely need to talk more about that because we've been trying to work it out and um, it's very important. For There's both of definitely us. options. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we just don't know up right. We like, because we lived in San Diego for most of our lives until we moved up here mm -hmm. to get away from a lot of that stuff. Mm -hmm. But we know that there's many more options down in San Diego. Up here, it's a little bit different. So that's I also. Think that there is one here, but I don't know if she's not big enough. I will check it out. I yeah, well, I'll, I'll look. I'll look into it. Yeah. But um. Well, thank you for having me. Oh, of course. That was nice. Thank you. I, I really enjoyed this, and I hope that um, you know, I, um, I will share a lot of information uh, via the podcast information so that people can find you. Mm. More importantly, I think that's one of the biggest parts of sharing this is that if people feel some kind of connection with you, they can reach out and and learn more about this and apply it to their lives. Um. And obviously I'll, I'll do that mm -hmm. because I think that's, that's really important. And more importantly, I think you do this, um, through your being to help people and mm -hmm. guiding them through everything that you're doing. I think that that's why I'm showing a lot of this is because mm -hmm. there's beautiful people like yourself trying to try to make a difference for yourself, your kids, your family mm -hmm. and everybody else around you. I can definitely feel that today. I've already gone through a couple different emotional things that I've learned from you today too, which all directly apply to my daughter today mm -hmm. as well. So, uh, thank you so much. Thank you. I, <laughs> I really appreciate it. it. And I hope to do this again because, um, you know, my whole family or my mom, my mom especially has always integrated me into this kind of stuff, but I've never taken the time to really go deeper into it. So I'm always wanting to know more mm -hmm. to ultimately know more about myself or about my daughter and the people around me which I think yeah. is really important because I like <laughs> doing the figuring stuff out you know understanding people I love I love watching people and just like gaining knowledge of who they are 
Okay. I'm like, <laughs> where right. do you have that? <laughs> <laughs> That's not in there. <laughs> this thing's all wrong. Exactly. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Yeah, of course. Thank you. So.